Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now, the sun is shining, it's apparently one of the hottest days on record in this part of the world, and to be honest, I'm sat here sweating like a glass blower's ass. so I'm going to try and keep this uh, nice and brief, and um, there's a fridge full of beer waiting for me, so excuse me if my mind wanders, because that's what's on my mind at the moment. Um, I recently posted um, on the community section of YouTube asking if you chaps had any, let's say, unpopular opinions when it comes to matters guitar related. And boy, did you uh, let rip. Um, you know, all of the all of the frustration about thinking, well, I'm supposed to like that guy. I'm supposed to, everybody says he's fantastic, but I just don't get it. All of those opinions seem to come out on that thread. And I'm going to just kind of give them an airing now, along with some of my thoughts on such matters as well. So let's crack on with the first one. Eric Clapton. Indeed, Eric Clapton. Now... Am I the only person who thinks that huge swathes of his output are about as exciting as watching cricket? Um, apparently not. There were a few comments uh, about Eric, and this one sums them all up pretty succinctly. Clapton, obviously. He's pretty boring. Now, don't get me wrong. If I was to pick my top five favourite albums, you know, the, the five albums I couldn't live without, there would be at least one Eric Clapton album in there. Probably Layla and other assorted love songs, or perhaps uh, the album he did with Roger Waters, Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. But for every Layla, for every Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking, for every Hideaway, uh, Crossroads, whatever, there are, there are dozens of things like Wonderful Tonight running on faith holy mother anyone for tennis and stuff like that which just to be honest with you sounds like he's only turning up to punch the clock and pay the mortgage and it i'm afraid it's just a bit dull there i said it let's move on prs guitars indeed prs guitars now i used to own one of these uh i got it about 15 or 16 years ago and um the sense of excitement when i finally got my hands on one was absolutely immense and i really wanted to love that guitar i genuinely did but i never quite managed it um one of the comments that was left on the thread uh, says this about prs guitars i'm not a fan of prs guitars the fretboard radius is uncomfortable for my hand, the tone they have isn't for me, and the USA-made guitars just seem overpriced. Don't get me wrong, they look amazing, but that's where it ends for me. I'm kind of on the fence with Fender as well. I don't like Fender necks. However, with a Fender, swapping out the neck is easy enough. I just gravitate towards flatter fretboards. And to be fair, um, I've never had any problems with the playability of PRS guitars. Uh, I think I didn't love my PRS um, largely because I'd sold uh, a guitar that was, up until that point, uh, one of my favourites, if not my favourite guitar of all time, the original Gordon Smith. And I think I always viewed the uh, PRS as being something of a an interloper. I'd sold the Gordon Smith to fund the, the purchase of the PRS and... Yeah, the, the, there were lots of regrets there, put it that way. And in the 15 years or so since I since I got a PRS, I think my tastes have changed markedly in guitars. Um, it's not the playability issue of PRS guitars that gets me. I've always found them eminently playable. To me, it's just the looks, you know. Um, it's just that overly blingy flashy ostentatious aesthetic that they deliver to me it, it's just all a bit footballers wives i'm afraid uh, put it this way if what she called that kim car dashboard woman whoever she is if she were to take up playing the guitar she'd probably order a prs and that says enough really doesn't it let's move on joe bonamassa bonamassa Technically untouchable, but maybe somehow it's not the blues. Indeed, Joe Bonamassa. Um, yeah, I first came across Joe Bonamassa in the mid-90s. Uh, I was just channel hopping uh, one bored Sunday afternoon, and I caught the back end of a documentary about uh, a rock band called Bloodline, and their guitarist was this child basically he, he was you know 13 at the most 13 14 he was a young whippersnapper but boy could he play the guitar 
my God, it, it, it absolutely floored me. And he was called Joe Bonamassa, and I um, I remember the name because it's not a run-of-the-mill name, but I didn't really hear much of him for a good 10 years or so until he's all grown up and he's appearing on the front uh, cover of Guitarist magazine seemingly every month. So, you know, I thought, oh, great, that's that guy I saw when he was a kid on the telly years ago, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go out and buy the album. I did. Uh, I think that the album I bought was Slow Gin. And once again, same story as with the PRS guitar. You know when you really want to love something, but you can't quite manage it? Yeah, exactly the same with uh, Joe Bonamassa, I'm afraid. It's all there. All the elements are there. You know, great singing voice. Fantastic, shreddy, melodic, bluesy guitar playing, coupled with a a, a killer guitar tone. All All of the elements are there. But it all just seems like it's done by the numbers to me. It's It just never sets the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end in the way that maybe, I don't know, Gary Moore used to, Stevie Ray Vaughan, or some of the newer guys like Josh Smith. Um, you know, Joe just never really does it for me. I always find it a bit dull, to be honest with you. Sorry to say. Oh, and the same thing goes for John Mayer as well, I'm afraid. Right, next. Mark. Bowling. Mark Bowling gets a lot of stick, but I really like his playing, especially the Beard of Stars album. He used the capo a lot, but so what? I agree. Mark Bowling, yes. Um, I have a, a best of T Rex compilation on my um, phone and I listen to it all the time. I mean, songs like Hot Love, Jeepster, Ride a White Swan, Get It On, Children of the Revolution, I could go on at some length. They're fantastic, catchy, guitar-driven pop tunes. You know, I mean, think of it this way. Back in the 70s, we had Mark Bolan in the hit parade. These days, we have Stormzy, whoever that is. And that's progress for you, apparently. Anyway, the capo, yes. Well, I use one all the time. What's wrong with that? Next. Paul McCartney, amongst other things. I never cared for Gibson much, even years ago, before all the other issues they've had. Don't care for any iterations of Metallica. Don't care for Page much. I do like Paul's silly love songs. I don't like John. I don't like political activist bands on either side of the issues. Well, there's a lot bundled into that one, isn't there? Um, Yeah, now leaving the Gibson stuff aside for a moment, uh, because uh, I think that has been done to death, to be honest with you. And it has to be said, I'm I'm bidding on a uh, Les Paul on eBay at the moment that's going for ridiculously silly cheap money. So um, I've got my fingers crossed on that. So I'm not going to do a video where I kind of, you know, kind of give... Gibson a bit of a drubbing and then a couple of days time I'm saying oh and here's my new Les Paul so that would uh, that that wouldn't look particularly good would it so yeah let's leave that to one side for the moment but yeah I agree Paul McCartney is uh, often seen I think as the uh, junior partner in the um, Lennon and McCartney team and I just think this is so unfair to be honest with you I mean you know Yesterday, for example, is the most recorded song in history because it just is that good. And Penny Lane, for, for me, is an absolute masterpiece of a song. It is... Um, it, anyone can write a complex song that sounds complex, but to write a complex song that changes key about seven or eight times and you know uses all kinds of clever little melodic devices and harmonic devices that, you know... It's, But it's all kind of bubbling away under the surface. All you perceive it as is just as a catchy little pop tune. So it's like, it's, you know, it's it's effortless. It's complicated, but it's effortless. And, you know, I think that uh, belies McCartney's uh, skill as a composer and, you know, lyricist. And I think it's just a fantastic song, as you can tell. I mean, I'm also a fan of, of Paul's um, solo work too. I mean, you know... John gave us Imagine There's No Countries. No thanks. Um, And Paul gave us, you know, apart from the Frog Chorus, which we'll kind of leave that to one side, but, you know, Paul gave us, um, you know, a a masterclass in melodic bass playing and catchy melodies and, you know, wittily written lyrics on pretty much every song that he's done, just about. Uh, I mean, heck, I even like Mull of Kintyre, but, you know, that's that's my guilty secret. Not that it's much of a secret now. Anyway, moving on. And finally. 
Indeed, and finally, the one that no one mentioned in the uh, comments thread on the post that I put up. Um, that ugly, unnecessary, unreliable, high-maintenance lump of pig iron that is the Floyd Rose Tremolo. Okay, so you need to restring your guitar, you'd better check your diary for a free afternoon. And then at a gig, you know, start by tuning the uh, the low E string with the thumb wheel and then work your way through to the first string and strum a chord. Oh dear me, it's out of tune again. Oh, and look, the thumb wheels are all at the end of the travel, so you've got to break out the spanners and undo the lock nut and tune up with the, uh, at the, at the headstock and then clamp it all back down again and then strum a chord and you're out of tune again. So you start again with the thumb wheels. You know, all the time you're thinking, why didn't I bring me Telecaster to this gig? You know, um, and all of this hassle, all of this grief, all of this faffing around just so you can dive bomb a fifth fret harmonic. Nah, not for me, I'm afraid. That's not my idea of a good time or a, go or a good, useful uh, thing on a guitar. But again, I'm sure if many of you will feel free to disagree with me, and that's fine. So there you go. That is... Uh, a collection of some unpopular opinions that you guys have expressed and I could have put uh, you know many more into this video but as I said I wanted to try and keep it reasonably uh, brief uh, so that's what we've got um, if you've enjoyed this video please hit the like uh, button uh, subscribe button notification bell all that sort of stuff and of course I will just rem remind you that there are courses on sale on my website at the moment uh, making the modes easy um, lead guitar play lead guitar the easy way and blues guitar beyond the pentatonic all the courses do exactly what they say. They explain those concepts in uh, clean, plain, clear English with a minimum of uh, techno babble jargon. Uh, you get jam tracks, you get tabs, you get loads of licks. You get everything you need, basically, to either make the modes easy or take your first steps as a lead guitarist or, you know, kind of move on a little bit beyond the minor pentatonic when it comes to playing blues the url is there on screen and the link is in the description box below so check them out you can preview all the courses for free to, you know before you uh, decide to commit and uh, yeah so check them out they're getting all kinds of nice things said about them in the review section on the udemy tuition platform um so you know uh, lots of four and five star reviews and i think it's the play lead guitar the easy way course that is the uh, highest rated course on udemy, udemy at the moment for lead guitar which is very nice indeed i have to say i'm quite pleased about that so there you go check them out uh, if you want some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition then give me a shout via the details at the end of this video if you live on teesside in the northeast of england you can come along for a face-to-face -face lesson or wherever else you are in the world you can have a lesson via skype and once again, you've got nothing to lose because your first lesson is, of course, free. So I'll bid you all a good day with that. And I'm going to go and crack open the first of what I suspect will be several beers. I look forward to seeing you all again next time around. Bye for now, folks. Music